Basically, we were united as uh, fathers on the day, and then we, we went and we changed the narrative. You know, that negative stereotype of, of black men, unfortunately, that is out there. I was trying to fit into an uh, environment that I didn't belong in, um, that was even in an employment environment that I had to remove myself from. Um, if it wasn't for the martial arts, even this place, Colin and the guys here, these guys saved me, literally. When we used to train, there used to be about 30 to 40 men training two, three hours a day. And then you think they've left that gym and they want to go be fighting and scrapping outside. That's the last thing on their mind. For me, training is what saved me from suffering from um, severe mental issues. I think it's down to your environment, the people that you're with as well, the energy. I think it's very important because negativity is, I'm, I'm, me personally, I'm allergic to it. I don't know about you guys. But <laughs> Movement's bigger than this one thing. The movement's bigger than us. Let's talk about your own martial arts background. So what kind of martial arts do you train and why did you get into them in the first place? We'll start um, with you, Chris. Just looking right straight at you, man. <laughs> um, mine's a mix. My favourite is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. so BJJ. Um, do it right here, me with Academy. This is my stomping ground right here. Um, these guys got me into it. I came from a background of um, MMA, a bit of Muay Thai, um, but Jiu-Jitsu, sprinkled with a bit of yoga, meditation. Uh, myself, I started off um, as a teenager with Taekwondo. I used to like kicking because I used to watch a lot of Kung Fu movies and just loved uh, <laughs> emulating what they did on screen. And then as I got older, I got into Thai boxing, Muay Thai, trained with uh, Brixton Vipers back in the day when uh, they were like the number one kickboxing um, academy in the country. Back, back then, you know, there were, there were loads of uh, European and world champions uh, when I trained with them. And then I used to just go back and forth to Thailand um, when I could to continue my training. And then in more recent times, as I've sort of got a bit older, I've uh, delved a little bit in uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've been doing that on and off for about four years. Still a, still a low level white belt, trying to do my thing. Um, done one competition, got a silver medal, which I was quite proud of. And um, I'll probably be doing that until I can't do anything anymore. <laughs> Myself, um, been doing martial arts, mixed martial arts, from about 15 years. Came out of uh, playing football, got suspended from football for some, some reason. You want to go into it? Someone choked me from behind and then I, I um, told him off after. How's that? <laughs> uh, and then um, one of my mates, he was doing, he was doing uh, mixed martial arts, cage fighting, and he always told me, Jay, come train, come train. And I was like, I'm not training. I'm not going to a gym, half naked, rolling around with men. I ain't doing it. For six weeks, he was on me, Jay. And then the time I, I was suspended, I saw him again. I won't do nothing. So I said, all right, let's go down. And literally, uh, when I opened the door, it was like, before I opened the door, the, the smell of body odor, naked guys on the mat, punching and kicking. I was like, wow, I want some of that. <laughs> <laughs> the place was dirty, dirty mats, dirty gloves, but I loved it. From that day, I've never played football again. Just got into boxing first, then into K1, kickboxing. Got into jiu-jitsu, was addicted to it for a good few years. Got my blue belt and then um, kind of fell off it because my coach was pushing me more into boxing and K1 bouts and was saying I'm wasting my time with this jiu-jitsu stuff. So I started just doing more striking, stand and bang. What does martial arts in particular give you? Discipline. When we used to train, there used to be about 30 to 40 men training two to three hours a day. And then you think they've left that gym and they want to go be fighting and scrapping outside. That's the last thing on their mind. After you do that sort, that sort of training, you, your mindset is completely different to that. You, know? mm. you took that mentality to the protest. How did that help you? How did that kind of influence it? Yeah, we were able to bridge the gap between uh, the, the, the youth, the frustrated and volatile youth, and uh, the police. You know, that incident where I um, you know, had the guy on my shoulder, that's the bit that got caught on camera. But to be honest, there was, there was a, at least four or five other incidents involving all of the guys where we defused situations and stopped uh, things escalating. It just so happens that that, that shot was caught and, and got vi went viral. And I think our training and our martial arts backgrounds, 
you know, gave us that, that confidence to just step to anything. You know, you don't think about fear or anything, you know, when you train. Do you recognise yourself in the kind of young guys that you were helping to protect in terms of before you started training, the kind of attitude 100%. you had? Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, you know, I, I have to hold my hands up and say that the man I am today is not the man I was, you know, 30 years ago. I would have probably been there looking for a scrap as well, potentially. Um, but again, having said that, you know, doing martial arts back then probably would have stopped me because when you, when you train and, and, and you compete and you, you let your frustrations out, you know, in training against a bag or on pads or in sparring, you have nothing to prove out on the street after that. Like, like Jermaine said earlier, you're, you're too tired, amongst <laughs> other things, to then go around scrapping and having fights and you have absolutely nothing to prove. Mm -hmm. I really honestly believe, you know, seconding what Jermaine said, that schools, they should, you know, boxing. Boxing's been doing this for years, mm -hmm. taking young, uh, underprivileged uh, boys off the street and giving them some kind of a, a chance in life, you know, to be able to, to better themselves. And it just, it, it stops you from getting yourself in trouble, you know, it really does. It, it gives your, your, your mind somewhere else to, to be and go as opposed to doing things that you, you don't even know why you're doing these, these, these negative things, but you're just doing them. And martial arts, boxing, all these things, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, these things give you uh, another avenue, you know, to take out your frustrations. In, in, my, in my gym, which is, I had from, from politicians to police officers to doctors to lawyers, unemployed, all different levels of people from all walks of life representing my team and representing my gym. It brings you that and sometimes it forces you to actually have that conversation. Mm. So, so society could learn a lot from martial arts schools yeah. because in martial arts schools around the country... You strip away everything. There's, there's, I don't think anyone talks about racism or mentions yeah, racism. Yeah. The, the barriers are literally broken right down. You go into a gym and you're just all, you know, you're t just teammates and training buddies and that's it. No one sees race or colour or anything. Yeah, society could learn a, 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 a hell of a lot from, um, you know, martial arts. When you hear a stat like black men are 17 times more likely to suffer from a serious mental illness, how does that kind of make you feel? For me, training is what saved me from suffering from um, severe mental issues. Um, if it wasn't for the training that I do, it, not only does it, does it work my body, it works my mind. Mm. Um, and for that time that you're training, two, three hours, whatever it is, it keeps you focused on that, it keeps you away from some of the stresses of life. Without that, I, 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 could, I could probably be one of those statistics because um, I, I totally get and understand the, the mental stresses that men face, men and women, but mm. I do know that a lot more men do commit suicide. Mm. And then obviously, again, then when you bring race into that, a lot more uh, black men are struggling yeah. as well. So I, I totally understand. And for me, you know, training <laughs> is everything, you know. In fact, I think now at my age, it does more for me mentally than physically, mm -hmm. you know. It, it's more important for me on the mental, on the mental front. When I read off the stats, 17 times more likely to be suffering with a serious mental illness or six times more likely to be detained under the Mental Health Act. Is that something you recognise from your friends, from your families? I've, I personally have gone through sort of mental health challenges even up until the end of last year, just before lockdown. Um, I was trying to fit into an uh, environment that I didn't belong in. Um, that was even in an employment environment that I had to remove myself from. And martial arts, like Pat said, um, if it wasn't for the martial arts, even this place, Colin and the guys here, these guys saved me, literally. I had that opportunity and my family um, to channel my energy into the sort of right, right place and just like Jay saying there's so many people within our community that fall through that net, that don't have mentors, that don't have training facilities, that don't know, that aren't aware that these places are there. Your stat, I think, um, you know, shows that they're too quick to section us as yeah. well, you know, and uh, there needs to be other alternatives yeah. to before, you know, yeah. obviously some people may be at a place where it's a bit too, too late for them, but I'm sure there's a lot of other people who just need a helping hand or just need to be understood or need some sort of help. Mm. Um, and, you know, I'm sure not everybody that's sectioned uh, needs to be sectioned, you know. It's almost like a quick, quick way fix. to just deal with yeah. it, a quick <coughs> fix, you know. And um, people are being, you know, pumped with drugs who don't really need to be. Yeah. If you did suffer with a kind of mental illness, mm. how comfortable would you be going to see a white doctor about that, going to talk to them about that? If someone knows how to do, do the job correctly, then I don't see it like that. There's no, for me, I don't have no colour barrier. But then again, 
if there's a black brother who, who understands how we, we've been raised, the struggles that we've gone through, it's probably easier to actually connect to him and to say, yo, well, these, these are the things that I'm, I'm having troubles with. Okay, so with your training now, how much of it is about function and how much is it about aesthetics? My training is all about function. I think when I was younger, in my 20s, uh, it was all about aesthetics, if I'm on, totally honest, you know, like, about how I looked. Um, and then as I've got older, I realised that functionality is a lot more important. Um, becoming a, a sprint coach also sort of helped to uh, embody that because with the sprinters, a lot of the stuff they do, there's a reason for it. When they do plyometrics, when they do um, compound movements, everything is, is geared towards a specific uh, goal, you know, so for me, you know, I, I work uh, out mainly with compound movements now. So we're talking about bench press, squats, deadlifts, maybe clean presses or stuff like that. Um, just functional stuff. Um, and then if I'm at home, I might do kettlebell snatches, you know, uh, squats with kettlebells and stuff like that. But I don't do any, any pretty stuff and also pull ups as well. Chris, and Lee, you're a younger guy. Is that different for you or is that a similar thing? Um, I've he's vain, he's vain. Yeah. <laughs> he, used, he used to be a bodybuilder, right? If you check it, look at it. Before, before, um, before I got into martial arts, I was into like bodybuilding, fitness modeling, and um, so mine was just, uh, yeah, I used to watch what I used to eat. I used to want big arms, chest, eight pack, all that. Like, that's all I was really into. And then I think going into martial arts with this pretty amazing body and then going up against some skinny kids who just absolutely just, <laughs> just all these punches and then next he's now look around and he's facing facing behind me so all that pretty all those pretty muscles didn't mean nothing you know so then I realized I haven't touched weights in like eight seven to eight years I haven't touched gone underneath a bench press no heavy squats and I haven't done no type of weights all we do is probably pull-ups press-ups squats skipping that's it that's only only any type of uh, on, on, on body weight stuff that I do let's talk about your diets then so after the kind of protest you went to a, a vegan restaurant right so it's kind of clean eating, clean living, is that an important part of your life now? After the protest, after all the sort of interventions and the fusion that we were doing, um, we didn't know how big this story was going to get. We didn't see anything that we did as being heroes or anything. Mm -hmm. So we just thought, you know what, it's been a good day, everybody's safe. Um, we've managed to defuse that Pat said as well already in our situations. Let's just go and let's sort of grab something to eat. Um, and I had to call out, like, one of my favourite spots is a um, joint called Eat of Eden. <laughs> They've got quite a few around. Plant-based, clean, healthy food. Um, so... Um, I, I was anti, you know. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm all on meat, meat, chicken, like, meat, meat. I think I'm addicted. I think I've got a problem. I think I just love meat. And when he said vegan, I was like, what? Vegan? I was like, no, I don't want none of that. Plant-based? I was like, no. So really, but when it actually touched my lips, I was like, right, what? this is amazing. Do you know what I mean? It was really, really good. So... I actually said I'm going to go back to that Absolutely. same place, like Absolutely. it's really good. So you're wearing the shirt today, talk to me about Ukai and how you went from the kind of the protest to the image to coming up with it and, and what that kind of process was like. Okay, well I'll start with sort of uh, Ukai and, and sort of what it stands for. So we've got United to Change and Inspire and the acronym is, you know, Ukai and basically we were united as uh, fathers on the day. Um, and then we, we went and we changed the narrative. You know, that negative stereotype of, of black men, unfortunately that is out there. We, we're hopefully, we've changed that narrative. And people don't see, you know, black men <laughs> negatively anymore. And then um, we're trying to inspire others, everybody to do like we did and, uh, you know, do, do the right thing when they're out and about them every day, you know, just don't just stand by and, 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 and watch, you know, various things unfold. You know, if you have to, you know, stand in together as a community and stop, stop these things happening. Um, and, you know, so we want to now, you know, with our, with our new platform, we want to go into schools, we want to, you know, go into the corporates, we want to, you know, we want to, we're going to be looking at um, education, we're going to be looking at the criminal justice system, we're going to be looking at mental health and we're going to be looking at fatherhood and all of these things uh, are going to be embodied within uh, United to Change and Inspire and hopefully we can make a difference and we can uh, work with people who are already doing these things within the communities 
and up and down the country and uh, you know just to do what we can to help and uh, ultimately give back to our community and the country as a whole. When you say you want to give back and help, is it more that you want to shine a light on other people's work or what is it? I mean, so, you know, we have a master plan, you know, we have a lot of things. We don't want to divulge it all now and give it all away. But one of the things that we'd like to do, for example, we've, we've openly spoke about uh, martial arts and what it does for young children, um, especially young boys. Um, it gives them a, 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 you know, gives them a sense of uh, belonging. It gives them, it makes them not have to be prove themselves out in the street. When, when, you, when you train and you work out and stuff, you have no need to prove yourself when you're out and about. You, you, you know what you can do and you leave that to others. So the more young children and your young boys we can get involved in martial arts, whether it be boxing, Thai boxing, Jiu Jitsu, the better. So we'll like, we'd like to set up you know, you know, small camps uh, where we do like eight to 10 week um, uh, you know, t coaching and, and teaching. Um, with all of us on board helping for free and then hopefully after that eight or ten weeks those children will go away and want to continue training and then find local schools like New Wave Academy, like uh, Mortal Arts, like New Wave, you know, like Team Titans who are a really good Thai boxing school that I know of. They'll go away and want to continue training and so that's just one, one element of the things that we, we want to do. Was this something that you kind of thought about after the protest or has this kind of been in your minds for a long time? Or? Well, not really. It, it, it kind of fell on us where that, because we all do stuff in the community anyway. Yeah. And I've, I've always worked in the community. I've always done little things for the young kids who used to come to Brixton Recreation Centre. I used to set up football clubs for them, um, get them in so they can play because they had no money. Uh, I've done my free hands up, guns down activities for, for people. So I've, myself, I've always worked in the community all my life. This movement and crazy thing that happened has kind of fused us together where that we're kind of, um, it's like we're, you have to do something there. Because the movement's, big, the movement's bigger than this one thing. The movement's bigger than us. A lot of people I've been speaking to have been saying the impetus from the Black Lives Matter protests are kind of dying down and the kind of conversations that we were having and we were trying to kind of stimulate, they're dying down as well. Is that something that you feel or? Even if the um, impetus from that whole movement is dying down, the reality of the situation is people are still being killed. There's still brutality, there's still injustice that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, how many, was it seven deaths we had? Um, seven deaths in seven days. Seven days. days. We're hoping it's not only a commercial movement. Um, and hope can only get you so far. Hence why the purpose of the UK is to actually put our money where our mouth is, put our energy and efforts into the right place. We know where the biggest challenges are um, and it's, it's going to take for everybody to um, really reflect and like, go on and want to do it on, 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 on all sides. It's a journey of self-discovery. Um, your chief execs are going to have to look at themselves and ask themselves, what have I actually done to inf if I have the influence um, to help create change and I'm not doing it and I'm actively trying to go back to how it was in the good old days kind 100%. of thing. <laughs> was it, it was never the good old days. I mean, you guys giving us a platform like this is, is excellent and brilliant and just, you know, long may it continue. I hope it just doesn't end with mm. us. You know, there, there are others mm. uh, that have an opportunity to, to speak on men's health and be on the front cover and, and do things, you know, that's, that's what we're striving for. Now you've had kind of a couple of months to think about it, to think about what happened. Do you, what does it what did it teach you about yourself? It, it, you know, it taught me something that a lot of people have always said about me and said to me, and I've had various friends uh, message me and, and speak to me. And they, they've, they've come and said to me, said like, you're the only person that could have been there at that moment to do that, because mm -hmm. other people may have just tried to cradle him and protect him and that, but to have the presence of mind to pick him up and yeah. walk, out, walk him out of there. I don't know many people who would have done that, Pat, and they've actually said that to me, and I've had to sit back and think, Wow, <laughs> you know, like that, that means a lot, you know. Just to finish then, just tell me about you, Kai, what the next stage of protest, what the next stage of education, what the next stage of reform looks like. Um, so we're very fortunate and blessed to now be being mentored by Lord Michael Hastings. We're, we're building UK as a brand to go into, like Lee said, go into different institutions, so from schools prisons. to prisons, um, to um, corporate. Um, corporate companies. Um, to basically anywhere who, any institution that feels they want to be united, they want to implement change, and they want to inspire other people as well. 
and we want to connect with as many people who are already doing that out there. There's amazing talents out there doing already. Stormzy, um, there's a lot of... Like, even, even people with, with the no names are, do, are doing that. Yeah, doing and that. you know, yeah, we'll and just, just imagine if we, if we can actually make this, this you know, we can, when, when we make this movement, the movement that it should be, mm. we will be hitting in these local yeah. people who actually are doing these things as well because they're not getting the recognition that they should do. Thanks a lot for taking the time out. I know we've had quite a long conversation there and just thanks a lot. Thanks for a lot what you're doing as well. That's, it's really inspiring to me to see you guys. No worries. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us. Uh, socially distant. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll hug you, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, no, it's cool. Thanks.